So today we're going to get started with CMO. So on the Copy web page, we'll go to Download CMO, and we can see CMO version 5 here. It's a .NET Framework 4.0, which is DB.NET and C Sharp and whatever else Visual Studios is providing. And so uh, we'll download the zip file here, and then we'll open it up and install it. Uh, onto our system here. So we just run the setup. Uh, there's some release notes there and a license if you want to sign that. That's nice. I accept. Uh, this is a 64-bit machine, but if I wanted to use a 32-bit software package, I'd have to do a 32-bit install. I'm going to go ahead and do the 64-bit because Visual Studio supports it. It's going to install it in the normal place, and uh, it's going to show me the release notes for 5.1, 0 .3, That's nice. And um, after I get that installed, I got the DLL on my computer, so I can see under Start My Programs, Copley Motion, CMO. There's a manual release notes again. I can uninstall it. I got VB.NET 2010 examples, it says, and I can run a status example. Um, but before you run it, you need to have Visual Studios installed. So I Googled it, Visual Studios, downloads. I saw the word free, so that looked interesting. Um, so there's the free download. You click on it, it starts downloading, and then it takes a while to um, install. So um, while an install is running, um, we can take a look at what we're going to use to talk to this drive. Um, I've got a StepNet panel here, and uh, we're going to get a serial cable connection so we can monitor. We're going to do a CAN connection so we can command it, and we'll have a terminator here. On the last page of every data sheet are the accessory items. Um, I'm going to use a USB to RJ11 instead of a serial cable kit, but you could use a serial cable kit with your own USB to serial adapter. And there's a StepNet NK network kit, which comes with the adapter from 9-pin to RJ45, which plugs into the drive, and a terminator, 120 ohms across CAN high and CAN low. And, of course, I'm using an STP 7507. And there's an STP CK connector kit so I can hook things up. Um, this is the USB to serial adapter. It comes with um, mating uh, USB connection and a 9 pin D sub. So here's the 9 pin D sub. This plugs into your computer. Um, there's a uh, flange option uh, with feet at dash F so you can mount it to, to the frame of your machine. Um, now, to find the, the drivers for this, we can look on the Copley, um, Copley CAN tools. So here's the firmware and drivers. So we've got the uh, device drivers for Windows. So we'll just put those onto the desktop. And then there's firmware, latest firmware here. And we can use the CAN view for Windows, which is a copy software for making a CAN log and updating the firmware and checking the, the network and capability. So here's the device manager, and you can see the, uh, the drivers. You could update them, browse your computer, put them on the desktop. Um, so all updated. Um, so that's good. So we can see the StepNet panel has a flashing green indicator for status, which is disabled. And then there's a CAN status, which is blinking green, red, red, which is saying it's waiting for the master. I've got a stepping motor, a Lin Engineering stepping motor with a differential encoder. Uh, that's just for monitoring. You could just do an open loop. Uh, motor power is connected. I got 24. You could use 48 or 75 volts, but I think this motor goes about 800 RPM without any problem with 24 volts. I've got a RJ11 connection here for CME2 to connect over the serial port. 
so I can run my can and monitor at the same time. Um, I've got a terminator, which I can use on the last node. And of course, uh, I have a node address, so I have to switch it from 0 to 1 to get my node ID uh, to take place. So this is the 10-inch uh, adapter. This is the RJ45 to D sub 9. This is the Copley USB to CAN, which goes off to the laptop. So I'm going to do CAN commands from CMO, and I'm going to monitor what goes on with CME2 over the serial port. Um, but first, we can check to see we have a CAN communication from CME2. So let's take a look at that. So I'm going to use Tools Communication Wizard. I'm going to connect over my serial port first, pick my COM port, connects to the drive. And um, normally in the beginning, you'll be asked about the mode of operation. So this is a rotary with encoder position CAN mode. And um, we can check the CAN configuration. I have the switch set to 1. Uh, the current node ID is 1. But if, if it was 0, like you just change the switch, then you'd have to reset the drive. So the drive comes up, looks at the switch, assigns address 1. The drive comes up in a pre-operational state. Uh, you can see on the control panel, it's uh, mode CAN stepper. You know, if I start jogging things to test things out, that's really cool and lots of fun, but don't save the stepper program position flash, and don't leave it in a disabled mode. You know, make sure it's in a CAN mode, so enabled in CAN mode. Um, what I use CME2 for, besides setup and, and, and tuning, um, basically I've got this Lin engineering motor. I do 4,000 micro steps. I have a 4,000 count encoder. You can do more micro steps, but I don't want to confuse things, so I'm going to set counts equal to micro steps. Uh, the current loop bandwidth and current loop settings are calculated from the data I entered. It's a 2.1 amp motor. That's good for boost and run. Hold current you can turn down. So the current loop bandwidth is 800 hertz. Uh, I'll take a quick peek to see how that tuned up in the scope here. So current loop, auto setup, checkbox, hit start. Um, you can see the gains can be increased. I think the integral gain was a little low. And uh, if we set it too high, we'll get a little too much integral wind up. And then this is some perfect tuning. I get about 800 hertz of current loop bandwidth. I'm not going screaming fast, but I need sufficient bandwidth for rotating the current vector. I've also select maximum speed. That's just a handy little thing to get a few extra volts out of it. So tools, uh, manual phase. We can give it an amp. Uh, forward rotating. That's a little slow to see it turning on the screen here. But as you go forward, counts go up. So check that out. I got clockwise of my motor here going forward. And uh, as I rotate the current vector, everybody gets a turn to deliver current, plus or minus an amp. And my counts go forward. There's about a half a rev. So yeah, I got a 4,000 count. That checked that out. And forward positive counts. I don't need to invert the motor or feedback. Um, so we're, we're good with that. Um, we could do a, a little move in an open loop. I use the profile tab. So we can take a look at the uh, auto setup checkbox. I added command and current on channel 3. <clears throat> uh, actual current. So this is a typical single rev. There it goes. So this is tested out 800 RPM. Commanded current flatlined at 2.1 amps. The actual current droops down as we our back EMF chews up our 24 volt supply. But I'm getting a good half an amp. If this ever drops below zero amps, you're in danger of a stall condition. So as it goes faster, it you know it takes away from some of the torque. But that that's okay. It seems to be able to do the move. So I'm in a position now where I should be able to talk to this thing over CAN. Let's put it in a stepper CAN mode, not a disabled mode. And we'll take a look and see what uh, Visual Studios does for us. Um, so I got start all programs, copy motion, CMO, 
examples, db.net status example one. <clears throat> so this loads up here. I got the form. If I double click on it, I can see the code behind the form. Um, just kind of starting at the beginning, I got some good notes. So good, good source code has good notes. I have a can address set to one because that's the node ID I picked. Uh, there's a can object. So there's a network that's created. You could have multiple networks. There could be a two-channel CAN card there. There's an x-axis, which will be on the CAN network. Um, when the form loads, you can see form load initializes. So the AMP initializes and the CAN network. Oh, no, these are creating the objects. I'm sorry. So we create the AMP object and the CAN object. We can set the parameter of the CAN object to 1 megabit or any other bit rate you want. And the port name is copley0. If it was a two axes, it would be copley0 and 1. And then we initialize the CAN open network. Um, it just uh, sets up a network for the drives to be on. And then there's an AMP axis initialize. You pass it the CAN network you're on and the address, and it'll initialize and enable the amplifier. There's an initialize extended if we want to take control of things on power up. Um, and here we go. We've got some more AMP read event status. We got AMP disable, AMP enable. That's all part of the form. So when we run the run the program, uh, we should be able to see what goes on here. So there you go. AMP initialize, the network's running, um, node guarding's turned on, there's no problem with connection. Uh, I've got, you know, operational state from pre-operational, and, and it's, it's ready to, to do some stuff. So we can, we can disable, we can re-enable the amplifier. Uh, we can read events sticky. So there's a, there, so, okay. My amplifier is disabled. I'm reading the event status sticky. I got a break turned on. I got PWM outputs disabled, and I'm software disabled. So if I had a fault, you know, we could see that too. So as a sticky event is, as you read it, it disappears. So that's how we can uh, check out check out the uh, status of the drive. Okay, let's see what happens when we introduce a problem. Uh, I'm going to disconnect the drive. Oh, I got a status error. So, look at the error log. Guard error, warning, limit reached, passive. Um, there you go. CMO timed out. So, if you've got a program, you know, you should figure out how to fix that. Oh, well, the master's still there. That's good. Let's uh, retry this. Dang. So, disable, enable. Not bad. So, yeah, if you're trying to do something when the drive's disabled, you can see the node guarding is taking effect. I'm going to check out the uh, guard parameters here. So yeah, I've got a 200 millisecond guard time, and uh, I guess you know another guard parameter value of three. Uh, these are set up by CMO in the beginning, so you you can change the guard times with the AMP initialize extended parameter. So I'm looking up in the uh, CMO programmers guys AMP initialize extended, and you can see there's the guard times and the heartbeat and the timeout. So these are the three guard parameters that uh, CM, CM, CMO sets up in the beginning. Underneath CMO is the CML source code, but on top of that is a wrapper around CML. And, and that's programmed to set up the guard times for us. We don't normally have to worry about it, but gee, maybe 200 milliseconds is too fast for some reason. I think it's a good time, but if your program stops and doesn't send out a message and you're going to get a guard error. So our program needs to handle uh, what goes on in it.
Thanks for watching. Getting started with CMO. Look.